got chickens of that on. I try to reset it, uh, turn off the whole power to the truck, turn back on, wait about five minutes, turn back on. It's still on. I don't know what's going on. I hope there's not a problem. I hope it doesn't turn off my motor while I'm driving. Find out. What's going on, guys? Um, it's your boy, we're back. It's Jimena G7. Welcome to my channel. I'm over here at the Quincy, Louisiana. We got some more in my pre trip. Walked around the truck, checked the motor, everything. Everything that checks out. Got here at 6, around 6 30. The check engine light popped up, and now I don't know what's going on. Um, I try to reset it. I cut all the power to the truck. Um, Wait about three minutes, turn back on, give the power back to the truck, start the, uh, you know, turn the key, let it do a cycle, fully cycle, then turn on the motor. Checking light still on. I don't know what's going on with my truck now. Um, hopefully it doesn't cut off on me uh, while I'm driving. Um, antifreeze looks good. Um, the uh, fuel and oil separator is. And it was very low. It's actually in good, in very good shape. I don't know what's wrong with my truck. Um, I noticed my truck is like a little sputtering a little bit now. And um, but I'm here in the Quincy, Louisiana, and to pick up my load. And I'm not leaving here without a load. Now, if the if the if the truck dud cuts off while I'm driving, we're gonna have a problem. Most cases, from now, the way how it looks is um, try to make it back home, drop my trailer, and um, bring it to Hector and let him check it out um, without doing the towing belt. Because right now I can't, I can't do the towing right now. If that case happens, um, I don't like driving with my truck with the chicken light on. Um, it. It throws in my head, you know, anything bad can happen, you know, and let's just say that it didn't even cut the motor. Let's just say like that if it doesn't, um, I don't feel comfortable driving like that because if I do go to little my load, let's say uh, like this load here is going to San Antonio and then the, the truck really does let go and and shuts off and then I'm having problems with it, I'm going to have to pay a towing bill for that uh, from San Antonio to Houston, back to Houston, bring it back to the shop with them and fix. And um, I'm trying to avoid that because that towing bill ain't cheap. Last year in the summer, in 2022, right, 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 the end of summer, I was in Cushat, Louisiana. Cushat, Louisiana, pick up some lumber, and it was going to San Antonio. Uh, picked up my lumber as soon as I got the scale. This is on my previous video. I'll have the links to that video there here in the bottom. Um, the, one of the lines popped off from, and it was taking antifreeze everywhere. So I lost about three to seven jugs of antifreeze and I couldn't move that truck because if I ever would I try to move to the next closest truck stop or get somewhere to get some cell phone signal so I can contact uh, my dispatch and all that stuff, um, it will blow a head gasket and then we have more real problems with the motor. It's gonna damage the motor and then now it could even cost more damage uh, and costs, uh, so I had to tow it from Cushat, Louisiana, back to Houston. It cost me three thousand. Okay. Um, we're now uh, like you know we're now how everything is uh, as of right now of twenty twenty three, and we're just we're break beginning in the summertime. We're still in the recession time. The economy is still messed up. Uh, lower prices on the lowest it's not that great and uh hold on a second 44 44 foot he's getting really low with me um yeah the total was three thousand so um the economy is still messed up uh you know going through all this recession time and hard times right now it, it's hard right now you know lows ain't paying um not all that great you know they uh, i mean it's still decent but pays decent but not the way it's supposed to 
and the come downs on some of the rates. Fuel prices has gone down quite significantly from five to now, the lowest I can find out is 3,005 cents a gallon now. Um, but still, you know, it's still up there. And I'm looking about 13 to $1,500 a week in fuel alone. So that's, you know, it's up part of the profit, you know. Um, I try to find the cheapest fuel as I can so I can save some money here and there. Um, you know, I, by the end of the week, you know, you're trying to find the cheapest fuel, you're looking about between 20 to $50 you save uh, on fuel when you're trying to look around and buy cheap fuel as, 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 as much as possible and try to save some money. Um, man, it's just not, not going good, you know, on that part, but, you know, I still got to work, you know. As long as I know if I keep on working, I'll make it, you know. If I don't work, it's not going to go good, you know. And I'm actually going through a hard time right now, too. Anyhow, um, I'm going to get loaded, strap down my load, do what I got to do, check everything in my truck one time before I leave this meal and see how it goes. So, hope the best of it for my truck. And I do the best I can for my truck to, to do what it does. All right, guys, get you an update. What's going on, you guys? Hector's helping helping with another customer, but he helped me first before before he showed up. So my truck's in the in the bay. So uh, he looked and see why I throw a chicken tonight, and um, <clears throat> it's a sensor that's on top of the reservoir of the antifreeze. That that's going out. That thing's brand new. It's not even a year old. It goes out. It goes out. Not a reason why they throw a chicken to the light. And um, my truck turn off three times. I had to pull over the shoulder, reset it, and um, the chicken light's still there. But it throws a warning, flashy warning, that the engine's gonna turn off by itself. So made it from my trailer. Came down here. I'm waiting for Heck to show up. And he uses computer to diagnostics, and that's what he found. Um, <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, since it's here, I'm also going to do my brakes, uh, my brakes on my and the drums on the driver uh, drive tire, the drive um, part, because <clears throat> uh, they're low. So you guys can see the pads are getting low. And the drums, they got scuffs in them, and uh, they're no good. So I gotta do all four drums and new bricks on the drive, on the drive, uh, on the drives. The fronts, they're okay, so I'm gonna leave those alone. So since I'm over here, and he's gonna work on that part. I'm gonna just do this too, knock it out one time, so I go back to work. All right, guys, peace. The next day. What's going on guys it's your boy Jim and I we're having another issue problem okay so <clears throat> I delivered I picked up a load of Camden Texas delivered to San Antonio when I delivered the load when I got there I stayed about two hours and I finally offloaded me um, after offload me I drove got back on Interstate 35 trying to head back to, uh, to Houston head back and then my my uh, my dashboard throws the chickens and like so I was like hey what the hell's going on I pulled over it, it showed a yellow chicken and like and then it shows a red chicken and like it says stop and it's flashing so I know it's gonna it's gonna I know it's gonna cut off my truck pull over pop the hood see what's going on and I noticed the reservoir on the antifreeze it was getting low it was getting right below the sensor I pour antifreeze um about a little over half a jug and I made it back to Houston. So last night I did my post trip, I checked it again and I, I filled up my antifreeze reservoir between cold and minimum, like halfway. 
when I got home, dropped my trailer, unhooked my trailer, I did my post trip, <clears throat> the antifreeze is at cold minimum. It was not in the middle halfway of the reservoir. So now, uh, this morning, I uh, popped the hood, it was right below cold minimum. So I had to fill up again. So I went through a one, a one and a half jugs of antifreeze. So now I don't know where it's going on. I check underneath the truck, I car underneath the truck, I popped the hood, looked around, I don't know where it's leaking from. So my antifreeze is leaking. So now I topped it off, put it back almost underneath a minimum on the reservoir, and I drove it here to Hector. So I'm over here at Hector's right now, check it out. So as you can see, they're working on it. I'm at Hector's right now. They're hooking up a pressure gauge to it right now. And see what's up. But see, I filled up halfway. So if you look, see, it was just below this morning. It was just below the cold minimum. I filled up halfway again. So I'm on my, the jug's right there. Just right behind there. If you guys can see it. But um, yeah, I'm looking at a freeze again. So now I'm working on that. I'll probably stay here most of half a day or maybe one majority of a day and get that thing done. Now I worked yesterday, I worked yesterday and that's it. I was supposed to work today, but I'm not gonna do with this on the road. So if I went through two, almost two jugs, yeah, I'm not gonna be doing this, refilling one whole jug every day going to work. It just, I'm not supposed to do that. And it just started happening just yesterday. So, <clears throat> Hopefully we get this thing scored away. Uh, Hector, these whereabouts are now they're hooking up a pressure gauge to it and see what's up. So they're working on that part. Keep you guys in a bit in a bit. All right, guys, we're back. I just left Hector's. Um, we did a test, the pressure test. My my coolant reservoir is not building pressure, so the max it'll go is five. But it's supposed to be about between 15 to 20 uh, 20 psi of pressure in the coolant reservoir so usually things like that the head gasket on the motor is bad but he checked it out there's nothing wrong with my motor there's nothing wrong with the gasket the head gasket my motor is healthy so he told me to go ahead swing by frontliner and replace the caps on the reservoir the top and on the side I have a spare one for the top I already changed it out I'm heading to frontliner dealership right now to replace the cap for the side of the reservoir on the antifreeze and then I need to go buy a case of antifreeze as well because I I only have one bottle left and I usually don't carry this low I usually carry about three four bottles with me all the time just in case you never know what happens so he told me replace that cap go get your antifreeze whatever head on home run tomorrow see how it goes and see if it's still leaking everything because if it's still leaking for antifreeze bring it back because there, you can find no other leaks whatsoever. So, if it's not leaking antifreeze, where does antifreeze go? You got me, man. Um, my, motor, my motor is very healthy. There's no leaks. There's nothing wrong with the head gasket because there's no nothing coming around the side of the motor. It's healthy, it's good. I, I also checked uh, the motor oil as well. There's no liquid in the, in the, in the dipstick. It's all oil, so there's no antifreeze in the motor. So that's a good thing too. And I know a motor is something. I usually you put to do oil change between 12, 12 to 15,000 miles. I always do it at 12. So I always do it early, keep my motor healthy, keep my truck running all the time. Because this the truck here makes me money, just like every other owner operator out here. So I do the best I can to maintain this truck as much as possible. Um, so now I'm heading to front down on the dealership, replace the second cap, which is on the, the very side of the uh, reservoir. There's two caps, there's one on top and there's one on the side. Every time you refill your antifreeze of your uh, antifreeze in the cooling system in the reservoir, you always undo the top one and refill your antifreeze, right? So I already changed that out because I had a spare one in my truck. So now I'm gonna go and replace, go back to the front line dealership to buy the second uh, cap on the left side of the reservoir, change that out and send it, see how it's gonna run, see how it's gonna roll. Um, hopefully it builds pressure, okay? Um, I replaced that reservoir about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. So I do not know why it's not building pressure. It's really weird. Um, I'm gonna send it, try and make some money tomorrow and see how it goes. If it still continues leaking, it still does the same thing, 
we're gonna look, uh, bring my trip back to Hector, else bring it back to here and um, bring it back to the shop and see um, what else could be the problem. And that's all I have right now. So stay tuned. Let's see how it goes. Catch you guys later. Man, this place is always packed. This is always packed. There's always a line here. Uh, gotta wait for a park. Great. All right, guys. Got the park. So I came out to twenty sixty one. Twenty dollars and sixty one cents for this park. For this cap. So you guys can see radiator pressure cap. So I buy take this out. It's gonna start like getting free. I'm gonna wait till I get some more free first. We'll get a case of freeze at a truck stop and go home and change it out. Catch you guys in a bit. Alright, well, guys, but I'm at the truck zone number two on Clinton. So, a case of uh, Majestic. A case, you're looking about 71.38 for a case of 50 50 antifreeze Majestic. I'm gonna go and just do it right here, that way I don't worry about it. Alright, guys.